In this episode in my series on food forest guilds, I'm going to dissect what's going on in this guild in front of me, which has 15 plus, maybe 20 or so different species, species that are all interrelated, and with a keystone of this Amorpha fructicosa, or blue false indigo bush, or river locust, as a nitrogen fixer. So let me give some context and then go into detail. So this guild is on the southwest side of our home here at the main Edible Acres nursery, Edible Acres 1, and there's the home right there. So that is due north. We are on the southern, western side of it right now, and first thing that I'll talk about here is the rhizome barrier at play. In this case, I'm employing Turkish rocket, which we offer, really great perennial vegetable, and there's also a perpetual sorrel in here as well. Both of these have broad, low leaves and deep taprooting systems, and so they do a good job of keeping the grass from encroaching. They like light, so they're on the southern side. Also on the southern side here is a European elderberry. It's kind of tucked in right now. Samdal, so I think it's a Dutch variety. And it's on the southern eastern side, which will be getting some direct light. This is overall a pretty shady situation. Um, most of the shade that's being created uh, here is from this blue false indigo bush which I went through. This is a pretty established plant, it's probably 15, 20 years old. This winter I pollarded it. I talk about pollarding extensively. Um, all of this, it's crazy, all of this growth is this year's growth. And all of the light green growth is the second flush of growth after I went through with one really intense pruning. You can see I cut away everything that was in there. It regrew and I used it as a really thorough mulch to feed fodder to this elderberry. In fact, today I'm going to need to go through and prune this back yet again and feed it, and it'll just keep gushing uh, more biomass and releasing nitrogen into the soil as it goes. On the eastern side there's more Turkish rocket, rhizome barrier, also a nutrient accumulator as needed. I can cut it and feed it to plants, and our more shade tolerant companions here. These are black currants. This is a variety called Bella Ruscaja. It's a European variety. I guess it's like a European themed guild. And they can tolerate. They don't adore this level of shade, but they can tolerate it. And again, you can see I've been putting grass clippings, chop and drop from the false indigo bush, and weeds are going in where it's shady enough that I don't worry about them germinating just all basically one big in-situ compost pile happening here. And this is secondary growth from this season. So I'll cut this back as well and feed it to it. In fact, I'm gonna pause here and do the pruning I need to do and talk about that. So here's a before, and I'll be pruning above this elder. And after, it's about three minutes worth of pruning, no big deal, you can really see the elder now. And so the midday stroke of sun will reach to all parts of this plant. And it's got a really nice, uh, deep, loose mulch, very protective. We got a nice heavy rain yesterday, and this will keep that moisture in for the pretty much to the end of the season. And you can see the elders putting on a second pulse of growth. And so this light release will really help facilitate it getting a lot bigger this season. The goal, since it's a European elder, it gets relatively large, is eventually it will be the main dominant uh, canopy element here as I slowly phase shift the Amorpha fructicosa down into a sub-shrub instead of a full-size shrub. But unless I need the fodder or unless the plants seem to be stressing, I leave the material on this. If we had a prolonged drought in July and this sort of shade and protection is really helpful for establishing plants. One of the side benefits uh, or main benefits of this overstory. Not sure how well these are showing up. These are the seed pods. So I can collect seed to grow more of this uh, tree, shrub, in the fall. But they are, this plant will produce massive amounts of large, beautiful purple and golden droop flowers that are a great nectar flow for honeybees. So really enjoy it for that as well. So now it's on to doing a little pruning work to 
chop and drop and release for these Belaruskaja currents. So I'll do that. Here's your before and after. Again, mulching the mulch. I already mulched the mulch before, so this is a meta mulch or some sort of crazy mulch. Uh, chop and drop, really nice protection for them. And again, more light release, a little more for the elder and a little more for the currents. So this is the east side. And let me go around to the west side and talk about some of those elements. Not sure how well it's going to show up since it's a little shady on this side. So a few things happening. There are these boxes. This one's abandoned. So in this box is Cornus Cousa or the Cousa dogwood. It's a really beautiful shade tolerant tree. So its first year in infancy it can grow in the shade. This is another box with some cultivar nuts that are growing. And this is a dwarf sour cherry. More than anything this is a test to see how shade tolerant it is. And so far it seems like it's growing pretty happily in the shade. It gets a little late day sun. So I can go through and chop and drop for it as well, but I'm leaving the canopy for now to see how tolerant it can be if it's productive. I've found that Nanking cherry, Prunus tomentosa, is actually quite productive in the shade, so maybe it's similar enough. And we've got one bomber raspberry getting ready to put on a fall crop. That gets a lot of good late day sun. An understory in here is a little hascap or honeyberry, very shade tolerant. Uh, little shrub and the fertility in here is great so I can stool layer this plant to propagate it. I'll ultimately probably dig this out and move it but the sweet fertile moist soil will really facilitate rooting so it's a great propagation space for this season. So there are herbaceous edible perennial plants on the boundary. There are a number of different types of fruit varieties. There's a little bit of plant propagation happening. Huge nectar flow for bees and a pretty much unlimited fountain of high-level fertility mulch that I don't have to walk anywhere to get in this whole guild. Very functional for a, oh, I'd say eight-foot diameter garden bed. Thanks for watching.